Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we are talking about the latest stock market news updates that investors need to know about. With that being said, go ahead and obliterate that like button right now, subscribe if you are new, comment down below your thoughts about any or all of these stories, and with that being said, let's get straight into today's video. As you see on screen, the indices have been doing very well, at least on a year-to-date duration. We also see that Bitcoin is up 23% on top of Nvidia surging by 50% just in the year of 2024. We're going to be talking about NVIDIA a little later in this video, but I want to give you a quick snapshot. NVIDIA, which is the AI artificial intelligence chip giant, has surpassed Amazon and Alphabet to become the world's third most valuable company on the US stock exchange, right behind Apple and Microsoft. We also know that although the three indexes, such as the NASDAQ, the S&P 500, and the Dow Jones, have been slightly down after a hotter than anticipated inflation report, these indices are still up and they are performing very well, so right now is a great time to be a stock investor. You should also know that the retail earnings season will begin on Tuesday, so we're going to get fantastic earnings reports from companies like Walmart as well as Home Depot. The general stock market should see further momentum because the majority of these earnings reports should be rather positive, but only time will tell, so we're going to have to wait and see. You should also know that one of my favorite technology companies that sells personal computers and phones, such as Apple, because they are known for their iPhone is expected to be fined approximately $539 million by the EU. And the reason for this is that they are being fined over allegations that it thwarted music streaming competitors like Spotify on its platform. Therefore, this is a shady business practice that Apple could potentially pay for, so only time will tell. In the meantime, I don't think this is going to impact Apple's share price because they have so much cash that they could easily pay this fine. But let's talk more about Nvidia's earnings which are coming up because I want investors to brace themselves. Some investors believe that this earnings report is going to be rather positive, while others believe it's going to be rather negative. However, for me, let's dive into my analysis and opinion to determine where the share price is going in the future. For some context and background on NVIDIA, let's quote straight from the article, which says this, It isn't an exaggeration to say that the tech sector's recent rally might depend on NVIDIA beating expectations for its earnings report this week. However, stockholders in the chip maker, which is NVIDIA, should be looking beyond the immediate horizon and particularly at potential competitive threats. So the potential problem for NVIDIA is not necessarily their upcoming earnings results, but rather the competitive landscape that NVIDIA finds themselves in. So let me add some more context. Currently, NVIDIA dominates in the respected space because their chips are used to train artificial intelligence systems, and they are anticipated to continue this momentum for many years to come. There is so much demand for NVIDIA's chips that their sales are expected to more than triple from the prior year to more than $20 billion. So overall, this seems like good news, right? However, there is a problem here, because NVIDIA's growth momentum is not sustainable, and that's why it is expected for them to slow down in the July quarter. But in the meantime, NVIDIA dominates their respected space because they have around 98% market share in the graphics processing units which are used for artificial intelligence. But only time will tell how long NVIDIA can hold on to this leadership position. Because companies like AMD, which is advanced micro devices, are literally right on their tail, let alone other companies like Arm Holdings, and we also have news from SoftBank, which could provide around $30 billion while seeking $70 billion from outside investors from the Middle East to form a company that would make AI chips to compete directly with NVIDIA. That means competition for NVIDIA is heating up to where these competitors could take away market share from NVIDIA because NVIDIA already has around 98% market share. So there's really no room for NVIDIA to grow in market share. Instead, they can only lose market share at this point. At the end of it, NVIDIA will have around 5-7 to seven custom and direct competitors for their AI chips. And ultimately, this will take away some market share from NVIDIA, and it could potentially cost them their market leader position. Now, this is something that's going to happen over the long term. In the short term, NVIDIA could still be a phenomenal company to hold and have in your portfolio, but just be careful and remember to take Take profits when you can. I personally hold Nvidia in my portfolio because it has paid off tremendously, and I also think that their upcoming earnings report could be rather positive, but we're going to talk specifically about their earnings report in another article in this video, so stay tuned, and I would love to hear your thoughts down below about Nvidia 
and whether or not you hold it in your portfolio. Speaking about NVIDIA, which Kathy Wood of ARK Invest has recently offloaded from her portfolio by selling a lot of shares of NVIDIA, Kathy Wood has also been offloading another company such as Coinbase. Kathy Wood, who is the CEO of ARK Invest, sold nearly half a million shares of Coinbase Global, ticker name COIN, ticker symbol C-O-I-N, for around $90 million. She literally sold 499,149 shares. So let's talk about why that is. For context, Coinbase is a cryptocurrency exchange, and they recently had a very positive fourth quarter earnings report on top of multiple analyst upgrades. So despite this good news, why is Kathy Wood of ARK Invest selling this company? Well, the simple reason is that Kathy Wood of ARK Invest is taking profits right now. She saw that this company surged by around 27% up to $180.31, and she is taking profits because she believes now this company is overvalued. For me personally, I think this is actually a pretty good move and I think more investors need to remember to take profits off the table after certain companies surge in their share prices because that's just proper risk management. Now you should also be aware that a KBW analyst upgraded the stock to market perform from their original underperform rating and they also increased their price target from $93 up to $160 per share which is great news. However, even $160 is below their current share price of $180, which again is why Kathy Wood of ARK Invest sold some shares. Coinbase also got great news in the form of various rating upgrades and price target increases from companies like Wedbush as well as Canaccord Genuity and JMP Securities, which all increased their price targets on Coinbase. But there was also some criticism surrounding Coinbase, which is a cryptocurrency exchange from companies like JP Morgan and Mizuho. JP Morgan's criticism is that this company lacked clarity on how a spot Bitcoin ETF boosted its overall business. On the other hand, Mizuho was also critical of Coinbase's performance and they maintained an underperform rating for this company and a $60 price target. Lastly, you should be aware that Kathy Wood of ARK Invest also sold around 6.72 million shares of Robinhood, ticker symbol H-O-O-D. And if you didn't know, this company operates a brokerage firm where you can buy and sell stocks and other types of assets and equities. Next up, let's talk about some good news regarding a Palantir Technologies, ticker symbol PLTR. And if you didn't know, Palantir Technologies is a big data and analytics company which serves both commercial enterprises as well as government agencies. And on top of that, this company also specializes in artificial intelligence. The huge catalyst that is coming up for Palantir Technologies is inclusion into the S&P 500 index, to where if any investor invests into the S&P 500, a little bit of their investment will also flood into Palantir Technologies, thus increasing Palantir's PLTR share price. You should also know that Palantir's quarter four earnings confirmed potential of multiple straight quarters of profitability regarding operating profitability, and this did increase its chances of joining the S&P 500. The great thing about Palantir Technologies is that their tools and platforms can be utilized in essentially every single company and industry. And as of right now, they have been landing a lot of healthcare contracts, which is a great key driver, which is going to accelerate their inclusion into the S&P 500. Fundamentally, the company is also rather strong, considering that Palantir's revenue, operational profit profitability, and their diversification in the revenue segments have all been extremely diversified and positive, making this company a strong buying opportunity according to this author. As for me personally, the company is trading at a share price of around $24.44, which I find rather expensive. I do believe this company will pull back in their share price, and when it does, I will be buying more into this company. But as of right now, I'm just going to hold this company in my portfolio because I don't want to waste money by buying this company at a very expensive share price. Now, hopefully the pullback happens before they join the S&P 500, because once they join the S&P 500, this will act as a very positive catalyst for their general stock price. According to the author, joining the S&P 500 index would be a major step forward for Palantir, which would ignite their growth potential. Ever since quarter three, this company did qualify to potentially join the S&P 500, and I think they will join the S&P 500 this year. But I'm going to go beyond that. I'm going to give you a specific date to where they could join the S&P 500, which means you should mark your calendar. So when can Palantir be expected to actually join the S&P 500? Well, the S&P 500 index undergoes quarterly updates. These updates happen on the third Friday of March, June, September, and December. Therefore, the next potential chance for Palantir to join the S&P 500 will occur on March 15th of 2024, but they will also have three other attempts to join the S&P 500 
1,500 in June, September, and December. Now, if I had to put my foot down on when this company will actually join the S&P 500, it would most likely be during the first half in March or June. But honestly, we're just going to have to wait and see, and I would love to hear your comments down below about when you think Palantir will be joining the S&P 500. Speaking about a phenomenal artificial intelligence company, let's talk about another artificial intelligence company, which is trading at an 84% discount. Like many other software companies in the software sector, the cloud computing specialist Appian, ticker symbol APPN, saw its share price drop dramatically during the year of 2022. The interesting thing is that just a year prior, in 2021, the company had a sky-high valuation, literally trading at one of its highest points ever. One of the reasons why they reached such a high back in 2021 was due to a short squeeze. However, short squeezes are not sustainable, which is why the shares have since fallen by around 84% from their peak in early 2021. The reason why investors need to be paying attention to Appian right now is because they are improving radically, and I anticipate their share price will catch on to the fundamentals that are becoming better. And here's what I mean. Not only did the company have a phenomenal quarter four result, but they also talked about their new initiatives in artificial intelligence, specifically their data fabric technology. For the company's overall revenue, they increased it by 16% up to $145.3 million, which beat analysts' expectations of the company only bringing in around $140.9 million. But that's not where the real surprise came in. For instance, the real surprise came in in regards to their earnings, because analysts projected that the company would bring in a loss of 24 cents per share, but they actually brought in a profit of 6 cents per share, which was a huge beat which ignited the share price, causing it to jump by around 12%. Now here's why I like the company. Appian actually cut to their operating expenses as the company is growing, and they expect to cross a break-even point for their adjusted earnings during 2024. So I would love to invest into this company before they become profitable on a quarter over quarter over quarter over quarter basis. And I think right now they could start that trend. Lastly, you should know of an upcoming catalyst for this company, and that would be because the company is holding an investor day conference in April, which will include updates on their artificial intelligence data fabric platform. So I would recommend you do your own research into this company, do your own due diligence and determine whether or not it is good for your portfolio. And I would love to hear your thoughts about this company down below. Next up, let's talk about the smartest dividend stocks to buy right now. Dividend investing is very good depending on your overall strategy. However, I like dividend investing for passive income. And this can easily be accomplished with consistent small investments made over time through dollar cost averaging. There are many great dividend stocks on the market right now. However, I want to identify at least three. So let's talk about them. The first one we have is Nike, which is not only a growth stock, but a growth stock that pays dividend. And that is right up my alley. I normally only invest in into companies that offer a dividend while they are also simultaneously a growth stock. I do not just invest into dividend stocks just because they are a dividend stock. This is because I want to make money in three ways. The first way I make money is through the stock price appreciation due to the growth of the company. Secondly, I like a dividend payout, which I then reinvest back into the company. And then thirdly, I like a company that grows their dividend payout to where my dividends not only increase as time goes on, but I also use that dividend to reinvest back into the company, which will grow because it's a growth stock. I will also get paid more dividends because I have more money in the stock itself and the dividends are growing simultaneously. So I'm getting paid literally in three ways ways by doing this. And Nike fits the bill for this. They are a sneaker and sports apparel company and has paid or raised its dividend for 22 consecutive years. And get a load of this. Over that same time frame, the stock has returned nearly 1,800% to investors, which outperforms the S&P 500 index roughly by 3 to 1. So Nike is arguably three times better than a stock market benchmark index like the S&P 500. Nike's business model is not complicated. It's very straightforward and simple. They make shoes and sports apparel and they sell them. And although this business model is easy to copy, other brands can't replicate it because of Nike's brand appeal. On top of that, analysts predict that Nike will grow earnings by almost 15% annually over the long term. This is why investors can look forward to more dividend increases and a stock price appreciation in this company. So please do your own due diligence and look into Nike. Next up, we have a Johnson & Johnson, which is a healthcare company. To quote straight from the article, 
Healthcare has been and always will be a core pillar of society, so it's hard to go wrong buying Johnson and Johnson, ticker symbol JNJ. The company is a two-headed healthcare giant, consisting of a pharmaceutical arm and a diverse portfolio of medical products, ranging from spine robotics to contact lenses." End quote. The current stock yields over 3% today for their dividend, and they come with a growth streak of 62 years. So that combination of growth and yields really add up year over year. On top of that, this is what I really like about the company, the company's corporate credit rating is triple A. That means the credit rating for this company is higher than that of the US government, and it's only one of two corporations to carry a triple A rating. Lastly, you should know that analysts believe Johnson & Johnson's earnings will grow by an average of 5-6% to 6 annually, so this is going to be a great core investment for your portfolio, which will add stability and passive income. And last up, we have Philip Morris International, which clearly has the largest largest dividend of these three companies. Now, you can't trust every high-yield stock you see in regards to their dividend, but you could confidently buy into Philip Morris International, ticker symbol PM. This company is known for a very specific brand of cigarettes, however, they have recently become a leader in next-generation smokeless nicotine products. As of right now, their management is working to get their debt down to two times their EBITDA by the end of 2026. But that's enough talk about dividend stocks and passive income, let's talk about a growth company, specifically Uber, which I personally am in invested into. Uber, ticker symbol U-B-E-R, ticker name Uber, is a technology growth company which operates a ride-hailing and ride-sharing platform. According to the article, Uber continues to benefit from a very strong growth momentum. For instance, their gross bookings on the platform totaled $37.6 billion, with a B, billion dollars in the last three months of 2023, which would equate to a 22% increase from a year ago. On top of that, Uber generated revenue growth of 15%, indicating that this company is still in full-on expansion mode, which is great news for investors, especially if you're going to get into this company right now. More good news for the company is that their management announced a $7 billion share buyback program and Uber's services are available in over 10,000 cities worldwide. This gives Uber a tremendous advantage over their competition. And the author of this article agrees in regards to Uber's competitive advantage over their competitors. And here's what he had to say, and I quote, I think Uber's most compelling attribute is its network effects. More riders, drivers, and restaurants on the platform makes Uber more valuable to each and every stakeholder. This makes it almost impossible for a new rival to successfully compete in the industry, end quote. You should also know that Uber has a partnership with Alphabet's Waymo to provide driverless rides, and this is actually being implemented right now in Phoenix, Arizona. Now, you should be aware that one of these driverless vehicles did get into an accident, so this is bad news for Waymo and technically Uber. More bad news for Uber would be if Tesla or Alphabet finally introduce this technology on a major scale by launching their own full self-driving taxi services, because essentially, Uber is a glorified taxi service. This would completely destroy Uber's business model, or Uber would have to double down on their partnership with Alphabet's Waymo so they wouldn't get snuffed out from this very competitive arena. But I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. In the meantime, I am personally very excited for Tesla's robo-taxis because I believe that will cause their share price to reach the moon, but only time will tell. Speaking about electric vehicles such as Tesla, let's talk about BYD, which recently launched an extreme extremely affordable electric vehicle. Chinese electric vehicle giant BYD, ticker symbol BYDDF, recently launched a new, lower-priced variant of its entry-level sedan. The names of these vehicles would be the Quinn Plus Glory Edition and the Chaser 05 Glory Edition, priced at around $11,100 US dollars. This new model marks a 20% reduction compared to its predecessors. That is absolutely crazy. The price competition and the competitive advantage that BYD has is almost unparalleled in their industry. This is why next year, Tesla plans to release a $25,000 electric vehicle in 2025, which I really am looking forward to. So I'd love to hear your thoughts down below about BYD and Tesla releasing or planning to release very, very cheap electric vehicles. Before we round out the video, let's talk about the approaching earnings reports that will increase the general stock market and momentum that we are experiencing right now. Like we said, the giant retailer named Walmart, ticker symbol WMT, which I personally hold in my portfolio, will release their earnings 
earnings report for quarter four during pre-market hours on Tuesday, February 20th, and analysts recommend to buy this company right now. A recent catalyst that this company experienced was that management announced a three-for-one stock split, which is very good. In their earnings report, their consensus EPS estimate is $1.65, their revenue should come in at around $169.37 billion, and if they beat on their revenues or earnings, which I think Walmart will because they have a very impressive track record of beating revenues and EPS, their share price should increase. On the same day, we will also see Home Depot, ticker symbol HD, also release their earnings results on Tuesday for its quarter four results in pre-market hours, and analysts are recommending to buy this company as well. Their EPS estimate is $2.77, while the revenue estimate is $34.67 billion. Again, I anticipate an earnings beat for this company, and maybe a revenue beat as well, which should ignite their overall share price. Other companies that are reporting on Tuesday would be Reality Income, Teladoc, Medtronic, Palo Alto Networks, Solar Edge Technologies, Diamondback Energy, Caesars Entertainment, and Ring Central. Now let's move on to Wednesday, February 21st. And this is when Nvidia will release their quarter four results, and depending on these results, the company could either jump by 11% in their share price or drop by 11% in their share price. The recent news update for this company is that they disclosed an investment in to chip maker ARM and SoundHound A. AI. Their earnings per share estimate should come in at around $4.61, while their revenue should come in at around $20.46 billion. Hopefully, they can top expectations in both of these regards, but we're just going to have to wait and see. Next up on the same day, we have Lucid Group, which is another electric vehicle maker. Analysts currently say to hold or sell this company, and honestly, I would agree with them as of right now, considering that their EPS is a loss of 31 cents, while their revenue is anticipated to come in at around $179.81 million. And if they miss on these estimates, the share price could go even lower. Other companies reporting on the same day would include Medical Properties Trust, Etsy, Rivian Automotive, which is another EV company, Suncor Energy, Marathon Oil, and Five9. Moving on, on to Thursday, February 22nd, we have Moderna, ticker symbol MRNA, which is going to release their quarter four results on Thursday before the opening bell. Analysts currently anticipate a more than 50% decline in their top of the line, which is their revenue, even though Wall Street still says to buy this company, but I completely disagree with them. Absolutely not. Their earnings per share are anticipated to come in at a loss of 99 cents, while the revenue could come in at around $2.53 billion, but really, no matter what they bring in, I am not a fan of this company right now. Other companies Companies that are reporting on the same day would include a Block, Mercado Libre, which I absolutely love, Fiverr, Booking Holdings, and Intuit. Lastly, on February 23rd, which is Friday, we have Warner Bros. Discovery, which is a major entertainment company. Analysts currently have a buy rating on this company, but I don't think so, and their earnings per share are anticipated to come in at a loss of one cent per share, while their revenue is anticipated to come in at $10.42 billion. And that would conclude today's news update. So I would love for you to go and annihilate that like button. For more videos just like this one, subscribe if you are new, don't forget to become a member of this channel for as little as 99 cents per month because that's what keeps me here on YouTube. And with that being said, I wish you the best of luck, happy investing, and I'll see you in the next YT video.